You want to praise the Lord while you have a chance. I think about the young lady on this past Wednesday who was killed on Mountain Road, she and her baby. She didn't think that that was her last day to live. So many others, the people in the FedEx building, just minding their own business, not knowing that that was their last day. I'm telling you, while we have an opportunity, why you have a chance? You want to praise the Lord. You want to get your house. Ah! You want to get your house alone. Hey! Oh my sake, you want to Why you have a chance? Hallelujah, we only get one time to do this. This is temporary, this life that we're living now. But eternity is forever. Hallelujah, when you get out of here, where you going? You get your heart right. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm telling y'all, I'm telling you. You better wake up. Some of y'all in here sleepwalking. Some of y'all in here don't deserve the time, not the season that we in. Hallelujah. It's my time. Hallelujah, saints of God. Hallelujah. Get your house in order. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But God said, I'm coming back after church. Hallelujah. Without a spot. A wrinkle. You need to iron out your differences. Hallelujah. Iron out your differences. Hallelujah. You better forgive while you have the opportunity. You better let it go while you got opportunity. Hallelujah. Don't let it be said too late. Come on, Holy Spirit. Speak in the house. Don't let it be said too late. I'm trying to tell you. We come in here waiting on somebody to pump us up, waiting on somebody to find us. Waiting on the next next day. Ain't no next next day. But you don't like Jesus. Hallelujah. All this stuff that you can see, feel, taste, all this tangible stuff is gonna pass away. You better get Jesus and you better get him for real. Why in the world are we coming in here faking it? To build a real relationship with God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I love to receive it in love this morning. Because yes, it's just the truth in the house. Yes, it's the truth in the house. Yes, we come in here wasting time. Can I tell you something? Your coming to church don't mean nothing to God. Because yes, He see you. He said, You said a lot of things with your mouth, but your heart was far from me. You showed out in the sanctuary. Yeah, you did all the spiritual calisthenics, but your heart is far from it. Bishop always said, you can always tell those who have been in the presence of God. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you ain't got to tell nobody you've been in his presence. It shows. And it also shows when you ain't been there. When you've been fleshed and calm out and all week long. And then you come in here weighing down the service. Come in here the same way and go back out the same way. But it's time for real change, people of God. It's time for real change. Why wow, you got this opportunity? I'm telling you. Don't you lay down with hate in your heart. Don't you lay down. I'm telling you now. Don't you leave out of here. You better, whoever it is, baby, you better release them. Forgive them. That little thing, the Bible says, it's those small boxes, baby, that's small to last. So you're looking at the big stuff. But it's those little things in that heart, baby. That God say, I see that. You need to get rid of that. Because that's going to keep you and I separated. Holy Spirit, don't miss nothing. Somebody say, why in the world is she going there? Because Holy Spirit is leading me here. I'm not speaking of my own accord. You best to believe that. It's a, it's a, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come in here, carnal minded. Weighing down the service. Somebody need to be healed. Somebody need to be delivered. And you will hear the foolishness.
Lord Jesus in the last day. And it's time to get right with God. The song says, Remember me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
too many people in your ear. He said, you need to hear me. Glory to God. You can't hear me because you've got all the chatter in your ear. Silence the noise. That's what you need to ask God to do. He's going to silence the noise. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus. It's a very serious time, a very serious moment. Don't you take it lightly. Jesus. Ah. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit is speaking to you today. Talking too much? Come on. Shut up. Shut up, said the Spirit of God. Hey! Come see our boat. Come on, my God. Yes, Lord. Shut up! Hallelujah. You need to listen. All the instructions are in me. But you're running to everybody else for the instruction of what to do. And the same ones you run into can't even help you because they can't help themselves. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Right now, in this atmosphere, we just want to say thank you. Because you're that kind of God that you will give us chance after chance after chance. And Father, we know that warning comes with more destruction. So Father, whoever it is that you're speaking to in this room, we pray this morning that they will heed Holy Spirit. That they will listen to the voice. Hallelujah of you and you only. Father, we will not be led by emotion. We will not be led by what we see. We will not be led by our wicked hearts. Father God, we will only be led by you. And Father God, we thank you right now in Jesus' name. It is so and so it is. In the mighty name of Jesus. Will you put your hands together? Father, you may be seated in this presence. We do honor the Lord today. We do thank Him for all that He has done in this room. For everything that He has done in us, with us, and through us. Hallelujah. He is great and greatly to be praised. Yes, He is. He is great and greatly to be praised. When you really think about it, none of us deserves to be here. It, it amazes me how we come into the very presence of God. The place where we can be changed. The place where we can be healed. The place where we can be delivered. The place, the place where we can be set free and refuse to accept what's already been done. We come in here one way and we leave out the very same way. Burden. Heavy. Distraught. Hallelujah. Word. Frustrated. Aggravated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here. And God said, I'm here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've gotten to the point now, I'm just going according to the word of God. He said, be instant in season. And out of season. He said, preach the word, rebuke, reprove, they sort. That's what he said. Hallelujah, because if I don't obey God, the blood will be required in my hand. Now, it's going to be up to you what you do with the word of God. But it's all for me now. Hallelujah, your blood is off of my hand. Glory to God. And when you get a warning and you know it's you, and you still refuse to change, that's on you. You can't get mad with God. So many people do. They get mad with God because things didn't, didn't turn out the way they thought it was. But there's a part that we all got to play to, and that's obedience. Hallelujah. You can't live a jacked up life and expect God's best to rest on your life. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. He 
He is a liar. God is requiring all of us to live right. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said we walk circumspectly. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's a certain way we got to walk. There's a certain way we got to talk. There's a certain way we got to live. You ain't going to ah, come on, Holy Spirit. You ain't going to be able to do what you want to do. Say what you want to say. Glory to God. And come in his presence and act like Hallelujah. You've been with him all week. God said, I see you and I ain't received none of that that you're trying to give me. Glory to God. I'm here to bring the word of God to you. I'm all here to preach. Hallelujah. Holiness or hell. And it's just the truth. It's just the truth. See, that's the thing. We got to be bold in this thing, baby. The Bible says, God says, he said, love that that I love and hate those things that I hate. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. I want us to go to Genesis 1 and 26. Bishop brought out something the other night, which was a, an amazing word. Yes, yes. Um, talk, talking about um, AWOL. Come on, come on. Talking about the men that are AWOL absent without leave. Come on, come on. <laughs> come on. Some men are present in the home. But they still ain't wrong. Y'all yeah. yeah. know that some your body's here with me, but your mind is on the other. All right. So we want to go to Genesis chapter 1 and 26. And I just, I want us to go there real quick. Everybody got it? All right, let's go. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> then God said, let us make human beings in our image. Yeah. To be like ourselves. Give it, to, give it to me in the uh, King James when I get through this. He said, they will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, and all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. And God said, let us make man in our image, uh -huh. after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, yeah. and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle. And over all the earth, mm -hmm. and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. You may be seated. Father, we thank you for this word this morning. We thank you right now, Father God, as, as I decrease, that you may increase on the inside of me. Let this word go forth with power, boldness, clarity, and with understanding. And it's in your son Jesus' name we be praying. We thank you for that thanks. Amen. Amen. I want to talk on the subject of this morning, either rule or be ruled. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, Lord. Either rule or be ruled. Come on. Come on. Yes. And I'm talking about this in every sense of our spirituality. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not talking about women be going home. She said either I rule or I be ruled. Honey, I'm going to rule. I'm not, that ain't what I'm talking about. Neither am I talking to you men that way either. But I'm talking about this, this. This, this, this power that God and this authority that God has given to each one and every one of us. Yeah. Um, what, what Genesis 1 and 26 is really saying, in other words, we are to serve as agents of God in this earth realm. Yes. We are to serve as agents of God in this earth realm. Yeah. Either rule or be ruled. What, 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 see, when you really think about it, God had given Adam everything. Yes. Yes. There was no pain. There was no, there was no nothing. Come no on. depletion. Yeah. He had everything. Come on. Come on. But he allowed the voice of someone else to come and take that away from him. Yeah. That's right. So it is. And I know that this is for somebody in this room today. So it is. God has given you all power and all authority. Either you're going to use what he's given you or you're going to be ruled by the enemy. This is the thing. Again, we cannot get mad at God. You know, I was talking to my girlfriend the other, the other day and, and we were just talking. And, and we were talking about this, how we get mad and say, we just wait. I'm just waiting on God. God said, no, you're not. I have given you power in the earth. Let them have the 
dominion. Yeah. Glory to God. I, I've learned, I have learned that I can have whatsoever I say. Yeah. I can. Yeah. It don't always come instantaneously. Yeah. But I'm telling you, there's a progression to this thing. There's a time, there's a time, there's a time, and a season of time, and a see a time, a time. See, we don't want the time. See, time is that process. Time is that period of waiting. See, we don't want that. I want it now. Glory to God. But can I tell you something? The Lord showed me something the other day. He showed me something and it blessed me. He said, uh, what does your waiting really look like? When you say that you're really waiting on God, what does that really look like? Because guess what? In your waiting season, you should be growing. In your waiting season, you should be growing. And he gave me this illustration, like these women here that are pregnant. When they first told us, we didn't really see much. We didn't really see much. But as they, as while they're waiting, they're growing. While you're waiting, see when God tells you to wait, you don't, you might not see nothing, but you gotta trust the process. See, in the beginning, when the doctor told them that they were pregnant, they didn't see a lot. They they, they, they didn't see nothing, as a matter of fact. But they took the doctor at his word. Only thing they knew was I, I'm missing my monthly. I, I haven't seen it in a while, and something going on. And when you got when you connected in the spirit. When you got some spiritual discernment, yeah. what we say discernment means to be able to what? Judge okay. When you got spiritual discernment, you understand that something is taking place in your life. Come on, something is happening at this moment. See, what we do is because we don't see nothing, see, then we want to tap out. Oh, I'm done with this. My God, when we see, we don't, we don't see the oh, y'all come on. I need y'all to hear me today. Pick this, pick me up in the spirit. You got to know, you got to know that you know that you know it's. I want this down last night. With every blessing, there is a battle. With every blessing, there is a battle. If you are under attack, that is there is something. There is something to be gained. With every blessing, there is an attack. There is a process. There is something that you got to go through and most of us want to tap out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, you don't want to wait on God. You don't want to wait. Oh, my God. You don't want to wait till the change comes. You want to you wanna make the change. Come on, Sarah. Sarah. She didn't want to wait on it. She got a word from the Lord but she was tired of waiting. She told her, I'm gonna need you to go ahead on and get old gal. Yeah. Come on. Y'all go ahead and do what you need to do. Cause I'm tired of waiting. She tried to go ahead and fix it herself. But can I tell you something? She didn't like what she got. She was miserable. What I'm trying to tell you is anytime you go ahead of God and try to make it happen yourself, this what God do. Oh, you, oh, oh, okay. Okay, go ahead. I'll be here. Because you're going to need me to get you out of it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you now, there is a blessing in the waiting. Why am I going there? I'm talking about something else. We got to learn how to wait on it. Stop trying to make something happen. Stop, trying, stop listening to this outside noise. You running the boat trying to tell, you trying to find out how to raise my children. Maybe they turn place. Oh, 
the devil. Yeah. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Did you hear that? Stay alert! Stay alert! Because I understand that we are living in the last day. I'm telling you something. Some of these folks you run into, baby, they, they, they want to, they, they seeking your demise. They, they want to know that it's over. They, 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 so they can laugh at you. So they can say, I told you so. So they can say, I knew it wasn't going to work no way. But you so busy asleep. The Bible says, stay alert. But there's a great enemy that's walking around seeking. He's looking for entrance. He's looking for, oh Jesus. He's looking for a way in. Can I tell you something? Not only are God's ears open to your prayers, but his ears are open too. The enemy said, oh, oh, that's where you weak. Okay. Come on. Right there. I know how to do it for you. I'm going to set you up right there. How can you rule well with your head uncovered? Can you rule well with your head uncovered? Yeah. I want us to look at. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, hold on, y'all. Uh, Ephesians six and ten. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Ephesians six and ten. Let's go there. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Yes, Lord. You ready? Go ahead, baby. Be strong in the Lord and in the and in His mighty power. Uh huh. Are you in the King James? No. Okay. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Uh huh. And in the power of His might. Uh huh. Put on the whole armor of God. Did yeah. you say whole armor? Oh. Yeah. Stop right there. See, that's our problem. We naked. Yeah. yeah. Some of us are naked. Some of us are half dressed. Yeah. But the Bible said to put on, to put on, to put on, to put on. The whole armor of God. This is not something that's just going to happen. The Bible says you got to put it on. Come on, tell us how to get dressed. Come on, put on the whole armor of God. Uh -huh. That you may be able to stand against the wiles or the tactics of the devil. Uh, he said put on the whole armor of God. So that you may be, may be able to withstand. The tricks, the schemes, yeah. the tactics, yeah. huh? The potholes, yeah. huh? The hiccups. Yeah. Come on, all these things that the enemy has set up in your life. The Bible said, "Put on the whole arm of God." What? So that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Uh huh. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Stop right there. See, this is the problem. You think it's you think it's Sally. You think it's Joe yeah. that you're fighting against. Oh. No, baby, it's a spiritual fight. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Lord have mercy. Come on, it's a spiritual fight. See, you fighting, you fighting the, the, in the natural, the court, the corner, the fleshly way. But the Bible just told us we gotta put on. Come on, come on, come on, baby, come on. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh -huh. but against principalities, come on. against power, come on. against the rulers of the darkness uh -huh. of this world. Do you see principalities? Can you see it with your left eye? Can you see the rulers of the darkness? How are you going to be able to see it? Let's go. And rulers of the darkness of this world uh -huh. against spiritual wickedness in high places. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. He said, take on the whole arm of God so that you will be able to stand in the evil day. That's why some of y'all ain't able to stand because you out here naked on the battlefield. You out here naked and you're wondering why you're getting beat up. The Bible just told me, baby, when I put on the whole armor, I can withstand. Baby, everything that the enemy trying to break my way, but I'm fully dressed. Yes. Let's go. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. Uh-huh. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Yeah. And 
your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Mm -hmm. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Yes. Listen, go ahead. And take the helmet of salvation. That, that's the one. And the sword of the spirit, that, that's the one. which is the word of God. Ah! Ah! Yes, baby, I want to deal with the helmet. Of I, when I was reading this last night, I said, Lord, you could have said and put on the hat. But you said a hell. I, 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 listen to this. Head speaks to leadership. Government. Hey, cover your head. I started to name this cover your head. But I, I, I heard the Spirit of God say, no. Either be ruled Either rule or be ruled. Okay? All right. So, uh, listen at this. During the uh, the time of the Roman soldiers, they put on their helmets last. Did y'all notice that how he, how he did this? During the time of the Roman soldiers, they put on their helmets last because it was the final act of readiness in preparation for combat. Baby, when they put the helmet on, everybody knew, oh, they were. Huh? What you look like? What you look like running out there on the football field? Everybody suit it up, and he you go, and your head uncovered. That's the way we look at the spirit. Everybody out there on the battlefield, you say you're a soldier in the army. that that was the final act of readiness in preparation for combat. The helmet was vital for survival. The helmet protects the brain, which is the command center for the rest of the body. Somebody said, Lord, cover my head. Take the shield of faith yeah. and the helmet 
of salvation and the servant uh -huh, of the spirit. Uh, uh, let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 30 and 8. Either rule or be ruled. God has given us dominion. He's given us power. Some of y'all walking around here depressed, oppressed, worried, fear, anxiety, doubt, angry. Come on. Baby, either rule or be ruled. How long you gonna keep letting Satan beat you up? How long you gonna keep letting the enemy come in your house? Glory to God, tearing up that that you've been. How long? God is saying to us today, use what you got. Use what I gave you. Oh, glory to God. He said, I told you what to put on. Every day you gotta put it on. Every day you gotta put it on. Every day you gotta make a conscious decision that I'm gonna put it on. The whole arm. Hallelujah. None of y'all walk out the door with you with what you slept in. At least I pray you don't. Well, you know. I have seen some people that look like they have just come back to bed. Especially in Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> First Samuel 30 and 8 And David inquired of the Lord Saying shall I pursue after this troop Shall I overtake them And the Lord answered pursue For you shall surely overtake them And without fail you shall recover all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, David was in a bad. Hallelujah. But David knew that the only good in him was the God in him. See, you're trying to fight in your own strength. David knew that the only good in him was the God in him. And that's my take this morning. The only thing good in me is the God in me. Glory to God. Very careful with that because you know pride of trying to set me. I always give the glory back to whom it belongs to. I always say to God, be the Lord. Hallelujah. You gotta be careful with that. But David was in a bind. He said, Shall I pursue? What I love about him, see, he took counsel from God. Why are you trying to take counsel from somebody else? See, in this day, you got to be spirit-led and spirit-driven. See, you move it out of your flesh. First thing you're going to do is call somebody else. Girl, let me tell you, honey, I'm uh -huh. Instead of, first of all, telling God about it. And I know, and I'm not saying, this is not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that God didn't put people here for us to be able to share and talk with. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, your first response should be to him. Your first response should be to him. Glory to God. David asked the Lord, he said, shall I pursue after this truth? Shall I overtake them? And the Lord asked to pursue. For you shall surely overtake them. When God gives you an instruction, y'all, I'm telling you, whether you feel like you're ready or not, you got to take God at his word. What it look like is more of them than of you. You got to take God at his word. If God say move, you better move. If God say speak, you better speak. If God say don't move, you better not move. See, this is the thing. The Bible says that my sheep know my voice, and the voice of a stranger we will not follow. See, that's the thing. That's the thing. See, a lot of people put God in front of it, and God ain't said a lot of this stuff y'all said, God said. I'm going to go ahead and put this out here. A lot of folks say, God told me to join this ministry. And then come back. I'm just going to... Y'all look like God just like wait, uh, like he's schizophrenic or something. Yeah, like he. God said, I ain't even tell you that. That was you. You moved out of your emotions. See, we gotta be careful. He said, my sheep know my 
my voice. And the voice of a stranger, we ain't going to follow. Do you really know the voice of God? That's the, that, that's the problem. Do you really know the voice of God? Because women in state of us, Bishop dealt with this other night, we don't move by our emotions.
God, you've given me the power. You've given me the authority. And I choose to use it. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. Either you're going to, because see, a lot of times we see in the spirit, we look powerless. We walk around defeated. We walk around like there is no hope. We walk around like, God, you forgot about me. Baby, use what you got. First of all, let it start with that mouth. No, I take that back. Start with that mind. Has, has your mind been places that your body has never gone? Honey, I was all in my house, didn't know where it was before I even got there. I'm, I'm already in my Range Rover. I'm already in it right now. I 
keep talking about it, but I ain't did nothing about it. That's what I'm talking about. See, we can, we can talk. But until you got a made up mind, you're going to remain the same. Either woo or be woo. Either we're going to use this powerful thing. Do y'all not know the choices that God, it's a powerful thing. Choice is a powerful thing. The mind is a powerful thing. And we got to have a change of mind. Everything else will line up. Once we change our minds. The Bible says in Proverbs 23 and 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As he thinketh. As he thinketh. As he thinketh. As he thinketh. That that he thinks he shall become. That's why you gotta be very careful where you allow your mind to go. How the enemy try to bring you to church and you stuck. It ain't gonna never change. She ain't gonna never change. That's what I thought. Until I begin to use what I got. What I had. But I still got it. Y'all get what I'm saying? Until I begin to use, he told he said, get out of his face and get in my face. I made him. I glory to God. I created him. I know the ends and outs about him. Why you trying to change? You can never change. Hallelujah. Your thoughts will become a reflection of who you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My grandma used to say this, and I can't, I can't remember how. To, you, can, you can take the man out of the country, but you can't take the country. Is that how they go? You take the man out of the country, but you can't take the country out of the man. What I'm saying is you can move to a new place, but if you nasty in the old place, you can go get the beautiful house, but it's going to be nasty too. Until this right here change. Baby, you can move all around town. You can get it. But until this right here change, you will see and keep getting the same results. Glory to God. I love this in Proverbs 25 and 28. It says, he that have no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. You're open to be attacked. You, baby, you, 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 you can't rule your own spirit. You, you can't even control your own mouth. You can't even control your, your own children. And here it is, you trying to give everybody else advice. And we so stupid. We listen. Instead of taking a moment to say, you know, listen to this, this woman. Her marriage jacked up. Her husband out there in the streets. And these mine at home. Oh, 